afternoon. You're listening to Clearing the Air on KFCF 88.1 FM Fresno. I'm your host, Dolores Barajas-Weller. I'm the director for the Central Valley Air Quality Coalition. And KFCF can be heard from Merced to Delano, or you can also listen online at www.kfcf.org. And this program, Clearing the Air, runs every fourth Friday on on, uh, KFCF at 3 p.m. And it is your source for air pollution solutions here in the San Joaquin Valley. We are basically, our organization is a partnership of more than 70 community-based organizations in the San Joaquin Valley. And uh, CVAC has been working in the Valley since 2003. And our mission is to create clean air here in the Valley through policy change and improving public health, uh, ensuring that everyone has the opportunity to be involved in in the process of of policy change as well. And um, today we're talking, we're revisiting an issue that we've discussed before, which is great, and we're going to hear a lot of progress on community choice energy. And uh, we have with us on the phone Woody Hastings. He's a Renewable Energy Program Manager uh, for the Center for Climate Protection. Hi, Woody. Hi, Dolores. Thanks so much for having me on again. Great. Thanks for coming back. Um, So we will talk about Community Choice Energy and uh, also give you some updates on local air quality uh, issues that that, uh, we have been updating you regularly on, like the Valley's uh, plan to attain our wintertime pollution, our PM2.5, and there's a lot going on within the Clean Air Act as well in, in Congress, so I want to give you a heads up on, on that as well. But let's go ahead and get started um, with you, Woody, on Community Choice Energy. First of all, you are the Renewable Energy Program Manager for Center for Pl- Climate Protection. Can you tell us about who Center for Climate Protection is? Sure. The Center for Climate Protection is a a nonprofit organization. Uh, We work on issues, statewide issues, policy uh, uh, to reduce. We were founded in 2001, um, so about 16 years now, and we work uh, at policies that reduce greenhouse gas emissions really at the community level. Uh, and looking at programs that both, uh, you know, have measurable reductions of greenhouse gases, but are also replicable so that if we do it in one community, it could be shared and, and, and done in another community. So we have programs in transportation, renewable energy, energy efficiency, and other other public policies. And uh, our, 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 our website, climateprotection.org, for folks, uh, and I'll try to repeat that a couple times throughout the interview so folks can find that information. Great. So really a solution-focused organization um, in, in terms of climate, it sounds like. That's, that's correct. We really don't spend all that much time talking about the, uh, you know, the scary, in, uh, you know, uh, consequences in that. We, we work on, on trying to d- uh, come up with solutions and responses to the climate crisis that make sense for communities and people and, and uh, reduce greenhouse gases. And we're really excited because we recently received word that we have been funded to continue our work uh, in the Central Valley through all of 2018. Great. And that work is, again, on community choice energy. And we'll talk a little bit about what that actually is. But uh, our funder was very interested in, in allowing us to continue our work in in that it's uh, it's work that combines really the social justice, environmental justice issue with the climate crisis, uh, you know, really emerging as the climate justice movement. And, um, you know, combined with community choice energy, the policy, it's really all about energy democracy and enabling more people to be involved in the decision ma- decision making about energy choices. You know, do we want solar and wind, or do we want, you know, fossil and nuclear? And I think uh, most of your listeners would probably agree we, uh, we'd we like to have cleaner, appropriate uh, uh, technologies that make sense for communities and the environment. Right. And and one of your, your programs, uh, you formed a, a sort of collaborative of clean power exchange. And can you tell us how how that works and, and who's part of that? that collaborative that's right that's right and in fact uh CVAC is, has been part of that mm-hmm. so we we uh worked with partners last year uh, and uh 
our own staff to develop a, a new program, the Clean Power Exchange. It's a program of the Center for Climate Protection. It's also a website. <clears throat> Really, a lot of the work is embodied in uh, a freestanding website, and that one is cleanpowerexchange.org, and that's where really a lot of, of, pretty much all of the information, resources, tools about what community choice energy is, how folks might get involved, how to keep up to date, what's going on in the various communities around uh, the state, um, and uh, so that's the Clean Power Exchange program. And it has things like, uh, you know, an e-news that's uh, uh, divided up into geographical regions so folks in the Central Valley can sign up for e-news just in the Central Valley. And what it's really all about is, is, is again, providing those resources and tools so that uh, both the uh, advocates in the community as well as the local government leaders uh, who are the decision makers when it comes to community choice energy uh, so that they have uh, information, resources, and tools to allow them to pursue it. Great. So let's uh, remind our listeners what exactly is community choice energy. It sounds like something really positive and clean, right, but we want to talk right. about what, it, what are the pieces. Sure. You know, and for a long time, it was a really obscure policy. Uh, it's a policy that was uh, first established in California in 2002 in a law that created the opportunity. Um, it has really turned into something of a movement. Uh, there are now eight community choice energy programs in the state of California. They are local not-for-profit programs that basically take over the decision-making about what the sources for electricity are uh, from the big utilities. You know, you get your power, and in Fresno, it's, it's an, uh, you know, from PG&E, and um, there, they, there are two big functions with that electricity service. This is all about electricity, by the way, not, not gas or other energy-related things. So it's about electricity. Uh, and so you've got the, the generation of the electricity, which is the sources of, 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 of energy for the generation of electricity, and there's the transmission and, and delivery. And uh, so Community Choice Energy takes that piece, and, and, that, and that, that splits your bill into about half, mm -hmm. about half and half. So um, about half of your bill relates to the, to the generation part, and that's what Community Choice Energy is all about. And what's important about this is that the, the payments that folks make, you know, residents and businesses in, in Fresno and the Central Valley that pay their electric bill, in Fresno alone, about $200 million currently leaves Fresno to pay uh, for that generation. And with Community Choice Energy, that money goes uh, to the com local Community Choice Energy program to operate that that part of the electricity puzzle. Now, most of that money goes to pay for the power that's sold to customers, but revenues quickly accrue, and that enables the program to um, uh, to manage rates, to keep rates low, to um, administer programs and offer incentives and rebates for all kinds of uh, things that uh, folks can take advantage of. Mm -hmm. And I do want to say... Um, you know, this is this is a program about clean air, and there is, um, I think, there's two significant connections to air quality. One is really what, it, what community choice energy is all about is about the long term. I mean, there, there's a long term and a near term uh, uh, aspect. In the long term, we're re it's really all about shifting, tra transitioning from a fossil era to a clean energy economy or renewables, greenhouse gas. Uh, free carbon free economy so that 's sort of the long term um, aspect in sort of relieving the central valley of some of these fossil extraction uh, operations and that and the like um, and the, in the near term what we've found uh, we 've always said that community choice energy agencies could be innovative game changing platforms, and we 're finding that to be true in that you know, a short while ago, I said it's all about electricity, um, but think about it. It gets into the transportation realm because what community choice agencies are doing is incentivizing the adoption of electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
in both uh, the case of the infrastructure, smart charging for electric vehicles, as well as buy-down programs for, for electric vehicles in the community choice agencies. And one of them is even doing a lot with electrification of buses. Um, you know, and these are programs that provide uh, buy-downs, not just for you know, folks that are already capable of purchasing an electric vehicle, but also for low-income customers and having uh, you know, additional incentives to make uh, electric vehicles affordable to uh, even uh, you know, low-income folks and care customers who are, are um, uh, you know, care customers are, are, are still receive the same discounts that they would under community choice that they do, that they do with the big utility. And all of the other public goods program, programs, energy efficiency programs, remain in place with community choice energy. That's one of our questions we get quite frequently. Great. And you've mentioned there are eight other community choice energies operating in the state. And, you know, I'm sure they're all um, sort of developing, um, you know, uniquely to, to their communities. But overall, who decides, you know, what are the energy sources or how that particular community choice is going to operate? Is that up to yeah, city or county? Yeah. There are there are eight in the state. I, I do want to say at cleanpowerexchange.org, we have a unique interactive map where folks can go on that map and poke around in there, and it has information for every single city and county in the state of California uh, and the status uh, of their development of community choice. So who makes the decision? So each community, um, there's a lot of latitude in how community choice agencies uh, can be formed. Um, and so they could be joint powers authorities that are made up of cities and counties that decide to work together. And there are a number of those. Um, or it could be a single jurisdiction. So the city of Fresno could decide to do its own community choice energy program. Uh, and then in that case, in those cases, it's typically the, the city council, the local elected officials do uh, tend to continue to make the decisions, but uh, it is a public entity, so it is open to public, and so the public has an opportunity to weigh in um, what kinds of uh, development of local energy resources occur, um, what kinds of content of renewable or carbon-free uh, sources are obtained are all decisions that, again, are the decision-making authority shifts to the community choice agency. So it's really important that the community remain involved. And uh, most of the uh, community choice energy programs currently do have uh, community advisory committees. I think that's a really good idea to, to do that so that you can retain some involvement from uh, uh, residents and whatnot in the in the um, decision making of the program, um, so it is it is the, sort of the community at large to an extent as uh, advocates for a good solid program that incentivizes things like solar and electric vehicles, um, and it's by and large the elected officials do ultimately. In the case of a joint powers authority, again, which is a combination of cities and counties. Typically, you'll have an elected representative from those cities and counties participating in a board of governors of the of the community choice agency. Right. Yeah, I think that's extremely important to to you know stress that those are some of the options, and I think those are some of the important safeguards, especially here in the San Joaquin Valley. I know when we first started talking about community choice energy, um, you know, one of our Issues um, for the Central Valley Air Quality Coalition has been, you know, really uh, identifying or distinguishing what is clean energy. There are, um, you know, several types of energy um, used here in the San Joaquin Valley that we may not necessarily think are clean, but may be um, sort of greenwashed for, um, you know, statewide programs um, like biomass, um, which uh, incinerates woody waste and contributes a lot of p uh, pollution to our valley or dairy digesters, which we know have a lot of indirect impacts while they're trying to reduce the methane right. emissions I, from I dairies. I think it's critically important. I can't, I can't overemphasize the degree to which it's important for public to participate in the process. Um, you know, solar stakeholders, uh, the community itself, EJ community to participate and help shape the program. 
I, I, you know, any just about any energy technology can de- be deployed in a dumb way. Um, you know, putting wind turbines in bird flyways or carpeting prime ag- agricultural land with uh, solar, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Y- you know, you, you can make mistakes with all of them, and um, some of them are just really non-starters and uh, don't make sense either economically or from a community perspective. So, yeah, I think it's very important that <clears throat> the the values of a community choice uh, uh, program can reflect the values of the community, uh, but the community needs to speak up. And that's one of the reasons why I'm on, on today is, you know, we, we want to encourage community members to get involved and um, we can talk a little bit later about some of the ways folks can get involved, but uh, it, it is true that uh, some of these uh, uh, technologies are better than others, and so we we tend to focus really a lot on solar because it is the one that, um, you know, it can be deployed right on rooftops in the built environment, and it tends to have the least amount of controversy and difficulty Um, And it creates jobs, of course. And so uh, the cost has been coming down, as folks are probably aware dramatically over the years. Technology has been improving. And so there's lots of opportunities, uh, really, for solar. And so we tend to uh, emphasize that as a real ideal uh, technology option. And uh, so so that's... that's, uh, you know that that's just uh, you know the the sort of main one, and there are mm-hmm. other technologies. Uh, there's not a lot of wind really in the Central Valley, so uh, you just need to be careful about how you're deploying any any technology. I think. Right, right. And uh, to the listeners, uh, if you're just tuning in to our show, this is KFCF 88.1 FM Fresno, and uh, I'm Dolores Weller from the Central Valley Air Quality Coalition, and we are. Um, on clearing the air, and we're interviewing Woody Hastings from the Center for Climate Protection, and we're talking about community choice energy. And um, also want to take a, a, a minute to say that KFCF is a listener-supported program, and our show, Clearing the Air, has been on, on uh, KFCF for uh, probably a decade do you want to say, Rich? I always forget how long it's been. Boy, it's uh, been over a decade. It's probably been about 15 years okay. now because Kevin Hall and all these other people were involved in it early on, and I've lost track. Right. So we've been able to, to bring to you um, sort of what's really happening, the environmental justice perspective on air quality and, and all environmental justice issues in the San Joaquin Valley. So that's something that you definitely don't um, get get anywhere else. And the show is... Um, uh, 100% listener supported and uh, you know KFCF does not is not supported by government grants or co- corporate underwriting um, and so we do ask for your support to continue um, this type of progressive uh, content to keep clearing the air on on uh, KFCF and it's not the only environmental show there's a lot of environmental programming on the station we have you know Terra Verde which uh, is was on uh, earlier today mm-hmm. also uh, we have have uh, radio shows that we've added locally, like Climate One, which comes out of KQED, which has done a lot of stuff about air quality in California. We have had uh, Radio Eco Shock. That's a show that we just added. It talks about the environment and things that are going on with that. We also have uh, Radio uh, Sea Change Radio, and uh, plus it's covered on Democracy Now and other shows. So if you in really find hearing about what's going on in terms of the environment, in terms of air. Uh, Lloyd Carter does a water show. You know, water is another issue here in the Valley. If these things are important to you and you want to know, you know what is happening, what can be done, you can hear that here on KFCF. And if that's important to you, call and become a subscriber. Right, and that number is 1-800-439-5732. And again, we're always uh, very appreciative of the space here on KFCF, and we hope that uh, you continue supporting the station so that we can um, continue sharing with you all of the important um, issues around air quality. Um, so, Woody, back to um, Community Choice Energy, and we were talking about you know a lot of the different energy uh, sources, um, and I think one of the uh, important 
pieces of community choice energy is also you know the revenues that can potentially come back to um, the the particular community um, as opposed to you know what our current structure is with a utility um, utility based structure right. Right. Um, and you've you've kind of put together what are some of the the economic benefits within some some research can you share with us what are the results of of that sure sure um uh well it, first yes the, the the one of the key things is that that uh uh that community choice agencies quickly accrue uh, revenues. Uh, in, in pretty much all cases, they've been able to pay back their startup uh, costs very quickly uh, and then uh, accrue those uh, revenues for uh, rainy day funds, uh, uh, rate stabilization programs, incentives, things like that. Um, the study that we did recently was an economic analysis. We hired a, a consultant to look at the question of if this if you were to establish a community choice agency in the Central Valley and we, we chose San Joaquin County, Fresno County and Tulare County as study areas and by the way this this uh, uh, paper is a free to download at cleanpowerexchange.org it basically looked at three different scenarios if you did a modest about 10% uh, over a five year study period it, it was a five year study period if you did uh, 10% of your procurement through solar 20% and 30% incrementally increasing in the, in the most conservative case over that five year study period the estimate was about 8400 jobs and created and about 845 million dollars in economic activity um, you know and that's in that's in the you know the the, the, the lowest case 10 percent and you know through a variety of means of procuring solar with uh, this mechanism called a feed-in tariff where you'd have sort of a standard contract offer to uh, the project developers with certain guidelines on what the projects need to be and who's being hired to do them and all that kind of stuff. Uh, net metering um, and, uh, you know, uh, one-off contracts, a variety of means of of the community choice agency procuring solar power so that that was what that study was all about um and and so yes i mean i think that it's pretty clear i mean and, and here's the thing you know solar is going in all the time right mm -hmm. um and it's happening in the central valley community choice has uh, a you know means of accelerating that deployment but also you know uh, fostering projects that are developed where the power itself is being provided uh, to Central Valley re uh, residents and businesses that the valley itself is benefiting from that power. If you read these stories about a lot of this utility scale solar projects that go into the Central Valley, if you read those articles, you, you, you see that, you know, the, the municipal utilities in other areas, Palo Alto or one of the community choice agencies somewhere else or sometimes it's even a utility like San Diego Gas and Electric that's, uh, you know, purchasing the power from a facility that's located in the Central Valley. Right. Now, certainly, you know, jobs are created when those are built here, but the full benefit is if you have a local uh, electricity service provider that is also, you know, generating and then providing that power to the local residents, and, and they get credit for that at the state for clean energy and all kinds of other benefits. Right, it does seem, yeah, it's definitely, I see an injustice in that, and in that we are, you know, building the, the clean energy, and, and then it's outsourced to, to another region, very much like how we sometimes take in a lot of waste from other regions of the state, um, so we're not necessarily getting the, the benefits of some of these um, green uh, practices. Exactly, so a community choice energy agency located in the Central Valley can help reap the full benefit of these projects that are going in. That's that's really a, a key point, I think. Great. So we just have a f uh, few more minutes, Woody. Could you tell us a little bit more about what you're planning for the San Joaquin Valley? You, you mentioned um, there's some additional funding. Congratulations sure, on yeah, that. We, we are going to be able to continue our work, and that's great. And so we're going to continue a lot of the work we've been doing, which is really reaching out to local stakeholders and uh, folks and um, attending community meetings. And we'll be hosting uh, some of our own community meetings and policy policymaker forums and bringing some of the business leaders together to try to, um, you know, shape a shape a program that makes sense for 
for folks. We uh, do plan to be hiring uh, both in uh, the Fresno area and probably uh, in Stockton uh, area as well, uh, folks to help uh, help out on, on the project. So, um, you know, if, if folks are uh, interested in that or want to help share that, uh, we're going to be posting information about that at cleanpowerexchange.org. Um, the work will focus mostly in Fresno and Fresno County, Stockton and San Joaquin County. Um, so uh, we're going to continue doing studies. We've started a webinar series. We're doing webinars every month, and uh, quite a number of those will relate to work in the Central Valley. So, um, again, the information about that is at cleanpowerexchange.org. We one of the things we do is an annual event. It's a clean a business of local energy symposium, mm-hmm. and I know you have attended a couple of those. Right. We're planning on doing the next one in May, uh, it May 2018 in Sacramento. So that's a long way off, but mm-hmm. just uh, folks want to mark their calendar, and that's you know a little easier to get to from the Central Valley. And it's really going to be all about uh, how do how do we go about really. Uh, really, uh, you know, uh, uh, boosting the degree to which the local resources can be developed and harnessed in, in, in an appropriate way for to, to benefit the local communities. Great. Um, and and you, also, you mentioned um, cleanpowerexchange.org, and there is a specific um, San Joaquin Valley section where, where folks can get signed up for a newsletter as well. Is just going to mention that and I mean I can send you the link if you've got a sort of a uh, information page on your uh, program site uh, but it's yeah it's it's uh if folks go to cleanpowerexchange.org, there's a news tab right at the top, and if you click on that, you'll see a pull-down menu, and it has a a, um, a section that's dedicated to the San Joaquin Valley, and so they can just sign up for that e-news, and that'll give you the information that's relevant to the Central Valley. You know, we're going to be reaching out to the Fresno City Council, so um, we'll be posting information about any agendized, you know, informational items about community choice energy at the Fresno City council um possibly even the board of supervisors we'll see um and so if folks also want to contact us there's a a, you know an info at cleanpowerexchange.org that gets to me and a couple other staff members uh at the center for climate protection so just go ahead and uh contact us through the website and we'd be happy to follow up with folks uh individually um and keep you you know answer any questions we might be able to answer right so yeah i encourage uh listeners to to learn more and to get connected with uh clean power exchange with uh, center for climate protection and and educate their their uh, elected officials on this because obviously they they need to hear that their constituents are interested in this um to sort of move move it forward so exciting to hear one one more point which is that you know this is a, a California state policy that is available to local communities that is not impacted by whatever the federal government wants to do. And these days, you know, it's so important to be able to, you know, do things that can advance uh, the response to the climate crisis uh, and to help local communities, uh, you know, regardless of what's going on at the federal level. So Mm -hmm. great. Well, we are running out of time, but I just wanted to quickly um, let everyone know that I, we've been regularly updating you on the PM 2.5 plan. The the district, uh, San Joaquin region, uh, all eight counties are the district is putting together a plan on how they're going to reduce their PM 2.5 pollution, which is our winter time uh, pollution that is extremely harmful to our health. And uh, we we have seen some encouraging information come out of the state air resources board on what are uh, some of the pieces that should go within an attainment strategy. And so we want you to uh, stay close to our Facebook ba- page. I think that's the best place. Um, our uh, Facebook page is facebook.com slash sjvcleanair. And that's where you can hear about the next community workshop on the PM 2.5 plan. Um, but thank you so much, Woody, from the Center for Climate Protection for joining us today to talk about community choice energy. And uh, we thank you all listening. And we'll, we'll have our show next month. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.